All right, welcome back to the garage. We're back in here this weekend getting ready to start another project. We're going to have to go to the board and look on our to-do list to see what's next. Um, I really don't know. I haven't decided yet, so we'll look at it together. Um, last week when I finished up the winch, one thing I forgot to do was narrate that video. Was I planned on doing it, but I forgot and I uploaded it before I narrated it, so I apologize for that. Um, and also on the winch, I added a little plate, one more plate to it, so if I did a little bit, I'll show you that. This was the extra plate that I added right here. It just kind of finishes it off, and I'll smooth that off with a smooth wheel. That way, the, the rope that goes through there, if it, I don't think it's going to contact that anyway, but if it would, it would be a nice, smooth surface. On the last video, one of the things I meant to narrate and explain, whenever I have a finished piece, I need to shorten it, and I've already cut it to fit around the bar that was cut to fit around an inch and a half. When I cut the two ends off, I like to keep the scraps and compare them and make sure they're basically the same. That way I can look at them and I can see that they're symmetrical. That way I know basically I cut the same shape on both of them and they're close. If one of these is way off, then I'll know I'll need to grind more on the on the piece. The same way here. Look at this. It should be symmetrical. This base here and that space there should be about the same. So I just like to look at them. That gives me a visual to know that I cut it straight and square. Okay, before we look at the to-do list, I want to share a quick story with you. When I was in grade school, my parents got called into a PTA meeting, and the teacher pulled out an assignment that we were supposed to do, and she pulled out a drawing of a, a dog running and jumping over a fence, and I think there were some flowers or something, and my parents were like, that's a nice drawing, what's, what's the problem? And the teacher was like, well, this was a writing assignment, <laughs> so I chose to illustrate it. So that's me in a nutshell, but also that means I can't spell at all. So when we look at this to-do list, in the comments, maybe whoever can find the most spelling typos in it, maybe I can send you a sticker or a t-shirt or something. So I can't spell very well, but I'm very creative and talented, but spelling's not one of them. So maybe I got everything right. I don't know. We'll see. So let's look at the list and see what we can come up with to do today. Okay, I keep multiple lists here. Here's my list, and I'll go over them. Um, here's the first list. This is the original one I started. I cut off some IRS support tubes in the back. I need to add some new ones. They were gotten away. This frame was originally set up for an Ecotech, and so I had to change some tubes back there. Uh, I need to mount the seats, seat belt tabs, remove unused tabs. Still need to work on the front brakes, but that's a spindle job that's going to be a pain in the ass that I'm kind of putting off for a while. I need to weld up a disconnect, the quick disconnect on the steering. We'll move seat belts, light design and mounts. That may be something today might be a good thing. Brake lines, obviously, I'm not going to do today. A lot of this stuff is obviously future stuff. Um, so we'll see. And like I say, if you look at these lists and you find the typos, just start making comments and maybe you'll win something. Um, this is the front spindle. This is basically the front spindle list. This is kind of the front end stuff and the rear CV joint motions that I have to go through. So. That definitely won't be today. As I've been going along, I've been tack welding almost everything on it. Rarely is anything finished welded, so I'm keeping a list. So when I tear this back apart, I have a checklist to go back and make sure that everything gets welded. We just added a winch on there. So, so again, you can laugh at all the typos. Won't hurt my feelings. So. And if you see something on here that you'd like to see me work on in the near future, just let me know. Maybe that's what we'll work on. Okay, what I decided on was working on lights today, and since I don't know where my brake lights are going to go yet, and my fog lights and overhead lights, I decided to do something I know where it's going, which is a reverse light. So I couldn't decide what to do, on, what to work on, but I know exactly where this is going. And the buggy's up against the wall, so it's kind of the worst place to be working, but I know exactly where it goes. I don't have to think about anything. It just gets centered and the hole right there. And my thoughts back here, the reason I'm putting this, this is my reverse light and I have my license plate right there. And then the skid plate goes right there and covers that. I just want to cover the engine to keep people, you know, from sticking their hands through there since you have the fan belt right there. It kind of fills the space, but it also makes it a little bit safer, I think, because this will be street legal. And my old buggy, I had a person that got burnt on the exhaust once. And so I'm just trying to make it safe as possible. So I'm gonna use the brackets that came with this, even though I don't really like them. You can kind of see, even in mock-up, the paint's already scraping off of them. So I've got bare metal on them, and they don't seem to be bent exactly the same. 
but I don't want to spend too much trouble on it because it's just a reverse light and it'll be fine. And if I use this mount, if this light goes bad, I can get a new one and just replace it and I know it'll fit. So that's what I'm going to go with. This is a light bar that I bought, now light, from Amazon shopping. Um, like I say, it came with all the hardware. That's the other hardware. I'm just going to make a simple tab for it. I'm going to brace the tab to go on the back bar. And the process of that is I just make a cardboard template using my circle template and the ruler, do that, and I come up with a simple template. And then when I transfer it to metal, instead of doing it like this, I have to cut around that with the cutoff saw, so it's a lot easier if I flip it over like this and have my edges already here where it's free and already cut, so it's a lot easier to just 45 and cut those. So. I'll just trace two of those out and we'll make some brackets. I always like to start with a pallet hole first. Makes it easier. Alright, when I was drilling this one, the holes got off center. You can see the hole that's drilled, it's off to the right, so I had to retrace this tab and I'm gonna redo it, but somehow that got off, but so I don't want to use it that way, so we'll start over. Okay, here we are. I got the tabs welded in. I got them tacked in. Anyway. So one thing, I know people might ask if they're worried about the exhaust coming up here and being too hot on the light. I'm going to run the ball haul exhaust, which will just be on the side. Because I don't like when you have the, when you have all your header tubes and stuff here in front of the pulley and the uh, distributor and the oil. If, if it's hot, it's hard to reach in there and check your oil or if you have to get water in your distributor and stuff so I want to avoid working around this area with headers and tubers tubes so I'm going to run a different exhaust so but I also have room in these brackets if I need to drill another hole I can cut this off right there and I still have room to drill another hole so I can move those like forward probably three quarters of an inch another thing I use when I weld this is a light that I got off Amazon they're kind of awesome they're round that's where I hit it with a grinder. They're super durable. Um, this is a magnetic base, so you can stick it to different surfaces. And that's also magnetic, so it stays in whatever position that you put it in. So they're really good. The only problem with you drop one of these, they will roll across the floor, and they tend to want to run away from you. But they're a great little light. And when I weld, I'll typically I'll hold one in my hand sometimes with one hand while I'm welding and weld with the other. Because I'm older, it's getting harder to see, so I need extra light on a weld just so I can see. So that's what I use a lot of the time. And if you're curious, it took about four hours to make those brackets. Normally, I like coming into a project with an idea of what I'm going to do. But today, I came in here not knowing what I was going to work on. So that tends to slow me down because I'm trying to design as I go. So it, that definitely slows me down, plus I'm filming. Um, if I had spent a day or two thinking about what I was going to be working on, those brackets... I probably could have did it in two hours, maybe an hour and a half if I knew exactly what I was doing, but that's why these projects take sometimes. You know, it's a half a day putting two brackets on it. So it's just, uh, that's what it takes. If you're working cars like these, you'll have friends that always ask you, is it done yet? Are you coming? Is it done? Is it done? It takes as long as it takes. You know, you can't, it's hard to put a time frame on it. You just try to fight each battle and just keep moving forward. So that's what I did. All right, now I'm gonna move on to the chase light. This is the brand that I bought. These are the instructions. Um, it comes with all kinds of mounting hardware and tools. These brackets, uh, it says they're supposed to fit inch and a half, but there's some pads there, but they're, it's pretty loose, so I don't want to use those. Anyway, there's too many failure points on this to rotate, so I'm just going to go with the simple brackets that it came with and just hard mount it and build a tab. Um, comes with uh, a lot of wiring and the switch as well. But I already have my own switch 
in the buggy already, but. Okay, I decided to use the hardware that came with the chase light and I just welded it directly to the frame. I cut it down a little bit. Um, you can see it goes there. The only downside to that is if I have to replace a light, I'll have to use the exact same light or have to have the same distance between the tabs now and the same height because it's not really adjustable. But I can always cut it off and re-weld it. Okay, there's a light installed. It's set back behind the frame rail, which is good. And I kept it nice and tight so that when I look out the rear view, it doesn't block my view. So I'm happy. We've got two, light, two lights installed today, so... Let's progress. Okay, now I'm starting to work on my brake lights and turn signals. I've got the brake light or the turn signal out. They're the same lights. This one's amber, one's red. The mock-up. That's the light I want to use. My initial thought was to do this. But I realized to get the socket inside the tube, it was just going to go in the tube and reach that bolt. But the wires are there. And I thought if I cut the wire short enough, I could get them in there, but they just, it just won't work like that. So now what I'm going to try, kind of the same design, but I'm going to cut a slot in it on the back side so you won't see it from behind the car. And I think a wrench will fit up into the slot and be able to tighten them. So from behind, it'll still have a clean look, so you'll just see that from behind. But on the back side, it'll have a slot for the wrench to go into. So that's the plan. Let's see what happens. Okay, I got that piece mocked up, but I had to notch it out that much, and even notching it out much wouldn't allow the wrench to get in there and turn it. So we're gonna scrap that idea. So it's back to the drawing board. I think I'm gonna do sort of like a perch kind of idea. Try that. From behind, it'll still kind of have the wiring. That's what I don't like about these lights with all that that hangs out. So I'm trying to just hide that. So. Let's get started on plan number three, see what happens. Okay, third time's a charm. There's all the individual pieces cut out. And this is the bracket tacked together. I'm gonna fully weld the bottom side on there, then out here I'll weld, but then I'll I'll sand it flush so it looks like kind of a cast piece. Let's go see how it fits. All right, here it is in place. The tube, can you see the tube starts to turn in right there? So this this front side's shorter than the back side, but okay. There's both brackets tacked up, so they're symmetrical. They both fit good. So probably tomorrow I'll fully weld them. And we'll move on to the uh, turn signal. Okay, for the turn signal, this was a bracket I came up with. It goes around. Kind of gives me access to the bolt. And I was going to remove this tab. I was going to cut that tab off. And it was going to go kind of right there and slide back. But the problem with that is the bolt on the bottom of it, it would be so close to the gas tank, there'd be no way I could get a wrench in there. So I won't be able to access the bolt. So that's not gonna work. So my new plan is to move it up here in the corner. So that's what I'm gonna do. So when you're on projects like this, I mean, you can't be afraid of making mistakes or doing something that doesn't work. Like I thought I thought this through with the access to the bolt and everything, but I didn't think about the access being close to the gas tank and not being able to get a wrench into it. So you just throw it in the scrap pile and move on. So that's just part of it. At the end of my welding table, I have a simple little break right here. I've got a one inch bar. And whenever I have to bend eighth inch metal, I can just put it in here, pre-mark it a little bit. Eighth inch still actually bends pretty easy. Okay, kind of just want to line it up. And get your bend Okay, 
once you get it started, it bends pretty good. So that's kind of in the ballpark. Okay, here's both mounts. I got them tacked up, ready to test fit them and then weld them up. Okay, one more thing I did to the light mount was I added a little quarter round on it. I took a one inch tube and quartered it. That'll act as a drip edge so when water goes around, it won't run into the surface and work towards the light. Kind of go right there. That also mimics that bar right there so when you look at it, it'll kind of look like to those bars, so it just, it just looks better. A little finishing touch. So now I'm gonna weld them up. Okay, now I got the brackets fully welded up. And you can see, that's what they look like before. The outside welds I'm gonna grind smooth, so on the back side, I just stitch weld it, weld it across. And then this after I smooth it out. Try to get nice, soft edges. Move it down really nice. Let me do the flapper wheel for that. So now I just got to smooth everything out and they'll be ready to tack on. See what we got. All right, here's the brackets fully welded and ran over with the DA. So we're ready to mount on the car. Okay, one last thing I did before I mount them, I welded on some zip tie tabs for the uh, wiring so I can just keep the wiring bundled up out of the way. I got these. I'll move those tacked down. The rear light. Okay, that's going to finish the video for all the rear facing lights. We've got the brake lights and turn signals, a reverse light, and a chase light, and there's a whip light there too. Um, I'm going to break this in part two, so this will be the end of part one. On part two, we're going to start the overhead lights, the light bar. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but that's what's next, so that'll be the next video. So, hope you enjoy this video and learn something, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.